in the world will accept him and help him and uplift him and let him know, hey, man, man, that's nothing. Right. But because his ringer was turned <laughs> up, that wasn't a time for him to do that to that man. Right. I should have been a time to show that grace and love. And yeah, and man. Support. Instead, though, he get that he get that in the street. Brother Ewan, how you doing there? Brother Noah, Sister Lindy, how you guys doing there? Hey, 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 hey y'all. How y'all doing? Hey, uh, what's happening, brothers and what's sisters? Happening, brother? What's happening? Hallelujah. How you guys doing out there? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Thank you, Another, awesome Another awesome day. Yes, amen. amen. Brother Dwayne just brought up something interesting. And this time, we're going to need, you know, power from the Lord. It's essential because just like the apostles, when Jesus left, they went back to doing what they already knew to do. That's why it's important that you do what he said and you wait for the Holy Ghost so you can be endued with power from on high. It's the power that's keeping us. It's the power that's allowing us to continue on this journey. If not, and that's why I was, what this one preacher I was listening to one day, and this is, he was telling the truth. Because one of the biggest evidence that you're going to know that you're in Christ is sanctification. If you wasn't in Christ, guess what? I'll be back out there gangbanging, selling drugs, doing all the things I was doing. Because that's all I know. When Christ's power stopped working in you, you're going to go back to what the flesh does. Plain and simple. If you're not back doing what the flesh does, that is because God's power is still holding you. We don't have enough power not to do, but only what we know. <laughs> Amen. That is a real story. So today we got a good, beautiful word. We're thankful for everybody joining us. The Iron Sharpens Iron. Our mission at Iron Sharpens Iron is to come together collectively for Bible study. As we get to know each other personally, building genuine godly relationships, only then can we truly come to love one another as our Lord has commanded. 1 John 3, 23, and this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. We are go all are going to go through things. It's in those things, that's what is going to build us and make us stronger. Don't get offended if I upset you. And likewise, we have to grow in that. We're still working. I'm still working on that. But guess what? The ball is rolling. And I thank God for giving us the opportunity to get started. And, and I know me. I got a lot of things I need to work on. Hallelujah. But one of the things about God is when he picks the individual to go forth and bring his word, he's picking you in your brokenness. So I don't know what God is looking at. And it's not my duty to step in and try to figure out what God is looking at. All I do is take heed to the call, try to use what I can through my brothers and sisters around me to get myself to where I need to be. Amen. And at times it can be a hard task. Looking at the things that you do in yourself can be hard because we're so busy looking at other things. That's why while we're looking out at other things, God will show us through others, through the Gentiles through his people, what things look like so we can see ourselves. Man, that's an awesome God, ain't it? That's an Amen. awesome God. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, brother. You want to pray a sin, brother, this evening? Amen. Father God, we thank you that we're able to join here together. Just when to, we give you all the glory and all the praise, and all the honor. And God, I pray, Lord God, that we receive your will, Lord God, um, and, and that we're able to walk in your righteousness and your uprightness in Jesus' name. And Lord God, I just pray that we receive this bread tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Many times I ask the Lord Amen. in this quiet time to take things from me because I struggle with things as well. And the Lord easily told me through his apostle that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So just like the apostle Paul, strong in his word, strong in the power of Christ, 
went through things. It's those challenging things that we have to go through as well as being women and men of God as well that is a doing that is not of ourselves. Not meaning that we don't have to build to get ourselves together. We do. But it's for a reason why God chooses you and you have brokenness and things that you're going to go through as well while you're serving the Lord. Amen. So don't get offended by that. But just remember to allow yourself to continue to keep rolling. Amen. One of the words we got today we're going to look at is how if you do not bring yourself to the word, you're going to be destroyed. Now, I'm hearing a whole lot of things in the world. All you have to do is be a good person. All you have to do is good do good deeds. All you have to do is take care of your neighbor. All you got to do is treat humanity right. And that's it. You can go to heaven. Well, we're going to break that news today because that is worldly news. And according to the word, if you do not receive Jesus, you are going to be destroyed. It don't matter. You can be holy as you want to. You can wear tight pants and a dress and all of that stuff that they say in the word. If you don't meet Jesus, guess what? You're going to go to hell in, in pants or in a skirt. Plain and simple. This is the father speaking right here. Look at our Hosea 1 and 7. There, how I get to this equation is Hebrews 1. In sundry times, God spoke by the fathers through his prophets, by his prophets. In this time now, he is speaking to us by his son. This is the book of Hosea. This is a prophet. So this is the father speaking to him. At Hosea 1 and 7, this is the father. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. Who was the father speaking about when he said he's only going to save his elect by the Lord their God? That is his son, whom the one he has given us. Remember it. Jesus is the first and the last of all creation. We were created through him. Without him standing in the gap, guess what? There's no us. That's why he's our God. When you get off this line and you pray to him, when you're on this line and you're speaking to the Father, I should say, you're doing it through his son, Jesus. When you're praying to the Father, you're doing it through his son, Jesus. When you're asking for things from the Father, you are doing it through his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's how your petition get heard. So it's important that we understand this right here. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, by sword, nor by battle, nor by horsemen. So what the Lord is saying here to us is he's not going to save you by Black Lives Matter. He's not going to save you by marching up and down the street. He's not going to save you by any other thing, worldly petitions that the world do. You're only going to be saved by the Lord, your God. And that is Jesus Christ, whom the Father has given us to reconcile us to him. Any questions, anybody? It's important we understand this. It's very important. Just like Brother Dwayne was saying, it is going to be hard for believers now, newborn Christians coming in, because they have so much stuff on the internet. There is so much deception. It is on the rise. But like we said, if you're searching for the truth and your heart is about finding the truth, God is going to lead you there. He will. He will. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I want, I want to share something uh, that happened this morning that I was on the bus with one of the brothers and uh, we were talking about Jesus and he said one thing that stuck to me that still sticks to me um, about what you're saying, Dwayne. It's, you know, you, you do the things because you know the Lord's there for you, right? It's just like... When people just shun down, shun, shun you down, and you're saying, "Hey, good morning, how you doing?" You got you got them guys just kind of looking at you, yeah, whatever. 
Well, within time, within time, that all comes to a stop because they see the light in you. They see God and Jesus in you. So they come to that. And that's just like what you're talking about, D, uh, how I uh, live that through every day is um, you just, you got to do the work, right. you know, and you can't ask for him. He just works in you, you know what I'm saying? He works, he works in all of us, but that's the same uh I guess same way that how you're putting it with uh, God, Jesus, um, how he just, he's there, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and and what the brother just, just telling me that was, was kind of moving because I felt that within us both, you know, talking, right. churching together and, and uh, I, I just think that's a special right there with with the relationship we have with him, you know, and, and how everybody have that uh, with him individually. And, um, yeah, that, that speaks, you know, volumes right there about that, you know, mm -hmm. and how that um, helps everybody, you know. And that, 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 that started off my day really good. And I know it did with him, too, on how uh, the Lord works in us. And uh, yeah, man, I just wanted to share that. That was a good, good morning start off the bat, you know, just kind of listening to the Bible um, on the app this morning coming in. And uh, that, that, that was kind of moving to me. So kind of off of what you were saying, I, I mean, I don't know. That's just my, my take on that. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he, uh, it just, it got me uh, thinking a lot about other other stuff of what what we go through, right? And when we when we try to give up and knowing that you know he's there, you know, and uh, we just it's a repetition of of what we do every day, every minute. I mean, we're doing it right now, and then when we get off the phone, we're still doing it, right? So it's it's just it's an ongoing thing. You know, and I, I uh, and we all have our own flaws, but this is what brings us together and in, in church together. And you know, I, I love this group. I, I, I've been, we all been, you know, doing our own things, but it's always good to come back and, um, and and remember of what what all we were doing this for, right? Right. right. It's for him and for us. It's for all of us. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with with all my brothers and sisters. Brother D. Amen. Amen. Yeah, definitely good, Brother Noah. Thank you for that share. That's encouraging. I mean, this, even in that, you let us know you can have Bible, you can have Bible study anywhere. You know, just like the Lord let us know when two or more are gathered, he's in the mix. So you and your friend, you're on the way to work, on the bus, Look at y'all have a <laughs> y'all have a service. Look at that. And this is one of the things that we have to get with man. We've been conditioned to think that we have to go to a certain place for it to be church. But one thing about when you receive of the Holy Ghost, you understand you are the church. God is not trying to save no building. <laughs> God is not trying to save no building. God's trying to save the people in the building. If we can understand that. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody else? Right here at Romans 5 and 8 and 9. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is beautiful right here. When we didn't love God, when we weren't searching for him, he sent a son who died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. So we see there is wrath coming upon the world. And the only way you're going to be saved is through the one who shed his blood for us, whom the Father has given us 
to reconcile us to him. And that is his son, Jesus. I don't care what they say about him. That's why you got to get a personal relationship and know him for yourself. And when you do that, they can say whatever they want to say about him. That's why Jesus said, who do you say I am? Amen. If they wasn't speaking like they're doing about the truth, I wouldn't even follow it if they wasn't speaking like they're speaking. Because that's how they're supposed to be speaking about the truth. Mad and upset. <laughs> Mad and upset. Do you hear me? <laughs> when something is proof, that's how they usually speak about it. Amen. Especially when it haven't introduced itself to them. Hallelujah. Romans 5 and 10 and, and to 13. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And we went through that. God died for us when we was no good. Him living, how much more shall we be saved? And not only so, but we also joy in God, that's the Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the way that you are reconciled, the way that you you know, uplift God the Father is by coming to him through his son, Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, that is Adam, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all that all have sinned. So by that transgression of Adam, it don't matter what you do and who you are, all are sinners. All have sinned. So you can run around, you can do good deeds, you can do all of this. But if you don't bring yourself to Jesus, guess what? You just somebody who did a good deed. Many people that are sinners, many people that are evil, do good things. If you truly in your heart have goodness, why wouldn't you want to meet the author of goodness? For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. So we see from the reign of Adam to Moses, sin was in the world. Sin was not counted when there is no law. So while the waiting, the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, look at something had to be established in the law to let you know what sin was. If not, it wouldn't have been counted. Just like Jesus told the Pharisees, had I had I came and showed you what was wrong, you sold you your sins, you wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have been in line. You wouldn't have been, you know what I mean? You wouldn't have been out of line. But by him snatching the veil and showing you, now you're held accountable. Amen. Brother Ewan. Amen. 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 Anybody got anything they want to say on that? I thought Brother Luke, you didn't take his thing off. I thought he wanted to speak on that matter. Amen. So we're going through these things because we're talking about how we got to be better than just being good. We got to bring ourselves to the word of God. And we're also talking about loving the world. If you're loving the world more than you love God, look right here at 1 John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We got to be careful. All this presidential stuff, all of which way the debate's going to go, which way the world is going to go. Look what the Lord says here. Love not the world. This is not me speaking. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We can't say we love God and be a patriarch for the world. It says love not the world. And then it goes even deeper to say don't even love the things that are in it. Yes, for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world all of the stuff that is in the world all of the stuff that make up the world does not please the father you know what pleased the father you come into his son Jesus Christ and being reconciled to the father that's a hard thing to do all we know is the world some of us don't know the world after here. 
Some of us have been shown in visions made by God for us to see to come back and tell the congregation. But other than that, most people don't know nothing but the world. You have to bring yourself to the Lord so you can get strength and power to do this. You're not going to be able to do this on your own. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it's of this world. So you get people, you say, oh, that's a blessing. Oh, that's a blessing. Remember, you getting all the cars and houses. If you call them a blessing, you can call them a blessing if you want to. But make sure you always come back to 1 John 2 and 15, where God says none of this stuff is from him. None of this stuff don't please him. None of this stuff you can't love above him. So how is it from the Father? Now, don't get me wrong. When it's imputed to you the right way and you come to God and he opened up the windows of heaven and pour out his righteousness on you, that is a different story. Because you know how to put God in his proper perspective of putting him first above all. But if we're going after the world before God, you're going to be in a tough place. You have made materialisms of this world your God. And it's hard to find God when you're buried in all of that. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, the world is going to pass away. And those things that are in it that you clinged on to and cleaved to, all of that stuff is going to pass. What are you going to be left with? Are you going to have riches stored up in heaven? See, if, if people were smart and they have all of these means of this world, they would take that and do for God's people. Watch out for these big organizations that's just swindling in all of these people for their money. Do for God's people and store up treasure in heaven or don't grow old or get mobbed. Amen. It can't no thief get to it. See, you can do that. See, man, and that's why I always like to go back to the story with Cornelia. Although he was a man who prayed and gave alms, look at the angel came to him and set him on the right path to go down to one Simon's house to see Peter and Joppa and go down to Cornelius' house and tell them you and your household shall be saved. You giving alms, you praying to God, even though you don't know him, you praying to him because something in your heart is allowing you to see. Look at God has set you on the right path to salvation. Man, that's deep, man. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep, deep right there. Say, man. Anybody, anybody want to look at that a little more? Anybody got anything they want to say on that? Amen. It's important that you allow yourself to the word so you can know who you are following. That is very well important. At Luke 6, Amen. 39 and 40. And he spanked the parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall in the ditch? You following after somebody is not going to be an excuse for why you lose your soul. You had ample opportunity to get in the word yourself, to line yourself up with the Lord, with scripture, and to know your way. Know who you following. Know who you studying with. Know who you laboring among. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And that's what I love about the Lord. Is because the Lord is letting you know if you keep the salvation and the sanctity of receiving the Holy Ghost, he holds you in regards up to a level as him. You ain't above him, but you're as him. Hallelujah. And you get to go and speak for him. Can't no man condemn you. It's Christ who died. Remember Romans 8, 34? So how can another man come up and condemn you because you're telling them the right thing what to do? Remember, that ain't the person on the outside. That's the spirit inside of him that's reproving you. Ain't no man condemn you and say you're judging me, you're this and that, and wish evil upon you. God called you. God commissioned you. Now cry out from the rooftops. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody Amen. got anything? That was awesome. Amen. 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 Nobody got nothing today? Hey, hallelujah. What's wrong, saints? Y'all sleep? 
Shit, man, we learned it. Hallelujah. Lamentations 3 at 24. Wait on your salvation. Don't let man entice you to run out there and start spewing the gospel around and you start wrestling and twisting the word and working ill like a lot of these guys are doing out here. Lamentations 3 and 24. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to them that wait for him. Or do, what are you waiting for? You're waiting for the Holy Ghost to come upon you. Then you're going to be a witness to him. Remember Acts 1-8? And Jude in the utmost part of the world. You wait for Jesus to come to you. Wait for the Holy Ghost to endow you before you go out because he's going to unlock the mysteries in you, in his word. Not only that, as he's going to do like what Dwayne said earlier, and he's going to unlock your skin, your character, so you can witness to people effectively. So if somebody's phone go off in service, you won't be picking a good time to cuss them out, but you'll be using grace and love to excuse them while people are looking at you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's not just the words. It's your words and your character, <laughs> which go along with watering and planting so God can give people an increase. Hallelujah. And you see that. You go into most of these debate shows, most of these shows, can't nobody get a talk in. They're all cussing and screaming, calling each other niggas. They, 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 man, it's ridiculous. And I know they ain't saved. Because <laughs> the first thing, when you get saved, what it's going to come and do, it's going to come and do, it's going to come and do a James one on you. Bridle that mouth. That's what James was talking about. Bridle in the tongue. The Holy Ghost does that. It tames you so you don't give glory to the flesh. Don't get me wrong. We're still working. Some of us are was bad. I can speak for myself. I was way worse than what I was. You say something, I'm snapping right back to you. But I thank God now. I'm learning to control my tongue and no recognizing the enemy and knowing it ain't the flesh. It ain't the person on the outside. It's the spirit that's in him that's trying to agitate you and get you off your square so you can kill your witness. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is good to him who wait for him. Man, that's Amen. Beautiful. One of the things you can do while you're waiting, do is study. And yeah, no, that's what you're doing while you're waiting. Yeah. Amen. Studying, Bible Amen. study. Yeah, Amen. most definitely, Dwayne. Amen. It's all a part about, it's all a part about rebuilding the mind. You know, uh, you have to go hand in hand, you know, like, like, think about, uh, I know the steps of how to buy a house, right? Now, you apply, right? But you also, you got to work on your credit. You know what I'm saying? It's all these steps. Same thing with God. You know what I mean? It's things that you can do that is effective. No, God don't need us. He don't need our help. Right. But it's things that you can do. So when it does show up, when it do show up and it do, you know, you're there. You're in the place where you need to be. Mm. You're going to get swallowed up. Place that you need to be. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that, Brother Dwayne. Definitely. Anybody else? Hallelujah. This is one of the things right here that people are struggling with. Now, we always said this before. A lot of us think God is just going to jump out the sky for us because God has already ordained and he's going to ordain more as well. That he's going to show you in his timing and bring you out from where you're at and send you forth. But a lot of people don't understand that what God give us, we don't got to wait for God to jump out the sky. God tells us right here how to. Look at 1 John at 6 and 7. If we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So many people out there, that's easy to spot, saying they got fellowship with God, but every time you turn it around, they're gangbanging. They're hanging out with sinners. They're doing everything of the darkness. Just like James, John say right here, if we say we have fellowship with him, talking about Jesus, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So it's okay for you to tell people that they're liars and they do not the truth when they're professing to be a Christian and they're doing things of the darkness. Look at the next one. But if we walk in the light 
as he is in the light, talking about Jesus. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If you got born again believers in the fellowship, guess what? You could be getting cleansed. You could be getting yourself purged. God don't need to jump out the sky. The Holy Ghost has already entered some of his men and women, and they're in the study. Guess what? And if you keep showing up, he can cleanse you as well through that means. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, remember, God knows when you're going to show up and when you ain't going to show up. You might come two or three times and then you don't come the fourth time. It ain't up for us. We're going to keep coming because we know it works. Because it's been working. But God sees you. God knows you're going to come one or two times and you ain't going to come no more. But it doesn't matter. Even if you don't come, go to another fellowship. That's in the word of God. That's teaching you the word of God. Man, that's the same blessing. And we encourage that. We encourage that. Amen. Get around the saints, stay around the saints. Get around fellowship, stay around the fellowship. If you look at the world right now, everybody hang together. The bloods hang together. The crypts hang together. The, the record execs hang together. <laughs> the construction workers hang together. Everybody don't hang together but the Christians. They don't hang together. They're professional Christians. They hang with the world. Excusing what James 4 and 4 said. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So you're going to hang out with the world all year long, but expect to go with God. That's not happening. Amen. Amen. Remember, if we don't bring ourselves to the word, we're going to be destroyed. Right here, Jeremiah 13, 1 through 10 on the board. Oh, go ahead, Ewan. You got something you want to say, brother? Sorry about that. I was just saying amen. Yes, sir. Most definitely, brother. You want to elaborate on that a little? I want to hear from y'all. I want to hear from y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. Thus says the Lord unto me. This is Jeremiah. Go and get thee a linen girdle and put it upon thy loins and put it not in water. So we see the Lord is, is telling Jeremiah to go and get a linen girdle and put it around his loins and don't put it in water. So I got a girdle according to the word of the Lord and I put it on my loins. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time saying, take the girdle that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins and arise. Go to the Euphrates and hide it there in a hole of the rock. So that loin, the girdle that he had around his loins, the Lord told him to go hide it in the rock by the Euphrates River. So I went and hid it by the Euphrates as the Lord commanded me. And it came to pass after many days that the Lord said unto me, go arise, go to the Euphrates and take the girdle from thence, which I commanded thee to hide there. Then I went to the Euphrates and digged and took the rock girdle from the place where I had hid it, and behold, the girdle was marred. For us that don't understand what that word means, is that word means destroyed. You pull that up. That word means destroyed. Amen. It was profitable for nothing. Amen. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus says the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride of Judah, that's the elect, and the great pride of Jerusalem. So what the Lord is telling us is he's going to destroy that pride in the elect and in the church. That is what God wants to do with the spirit of the Holy Ghost. It wants to, it wants to change us. It wants to give us a clean heart, a renewed spirit, and, and, and regenerate us. This evil people, look at which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imaginations of their heart. That's you not being a born again. You want to walk according to this world. After other gods. All of these people in the world, look at lowercase God. 
all these big name money star people, movie star executives, all of this stuff of this world. Those are idols. Those are your gods. That's who you aspire to and look up to. That's who you draw your strength from. That's your vision. That's what you want to be like. And to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. So if you walk in your imagination, you don't bring yourself to the word so you can receive of the Holy Ghost, we're going to be destroyed. Plain and simple. This is the word. This is the word. Remember, like we read with Adam, when Adam's transgression, all have sinned. There is no escaping. You're covered. By one man's transgression of Adam, we all now have sinned. No matter if you partook in it. Go ahead, Brother Dwayne. Amen. That's very important for us to know. You don't, this is not by because you did good deeds or because you did good works. And this is what we're trying to get people to understand that are, you know, professing the laws of Moses. See, they don't understand, you know, when Jesus Christ coming, how Jesus is the end of the law. Now you got to bring yourself up now. You got to bring yourself up to be introduced and to get a relationship with Jesus who's going to give you the Holy Ghost. And they don't catch that. And, and the reason why they don't catch that, because like we already said in Romans in the word, it's a stumbling stone to them. They ain't supposed to get it. That's why. Plain, plain and simple. I mean, when I was going about doing my little crime and ended up in jail, even though I kept saying Jesus, even though I kept doing what I did in my heart, When the Lord came to me, I didn't deny that. I didn't deny that. I wasn't running around trying to misconstrue the Bible that I'm all here and everywhere trying to twist the Bible up. I wasn't doing that. I wasn't saying, no, I'm of the law. I'm not going to accept Jesus because the world painted a bad picture of Jesus' name. I didn't say that. The world's supposed to do that. Don't you know God created everything? God created them men who came over there in captivity and, and, and got all the Africans and took them on an Atlantic trade, trade. God created all of that. God allowed all of that. That's what people don't understand. Dirty men brought you a clean book. <laughs> Amen. And when I was dirty, look, at he found me in my dirtiness. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and this is the thing that I understand with people. And to even add more on to that, what people always miss out on is that also the European guys that went over across the water to get you, when they landed on the other side, guess who was a big help in going to round you up? Your own people, just like today. All of these big music executives, they don't care about you. They're teaching you how to call girls out their name and shoot men and all of that as long as they get the bag. Now think about that one. So this is stuff that we got to think about. This is stuff that we got to look at. Look at the world that you're cleaving to. Look at the world that you're loving. Look at the world that you're putting above your salvation. God wants to bring you to glory. God wants to bring you to another life after this. But you got to get to know him now. You got to worship him while you have your being. That's the way that this works. Anybody got anything else they want to say? Amen. Good word. Good word. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Now, evidence right here that we are waiting on the Holy Ghost. Right here, John 16, at 7 and 8. Nevertheless, I tell you, this is Jesus speaking to his apostles. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, that is beneficial, for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will be reproving the world of sin. So that's the Holy Ghost in you that's correcting people. That's correcting you. That's allowing you the ability to speak up and tell people, no, that ain't right. 
That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. That's why it's imperative. Like Lamentations 3 and 24, wait on the salvation of the Lord. Acts 1 and 8, tarry in Jerusalem, Jesus told his apostles, until you be endued with the power from on high. That spirit and that power from on high is God coming back to you. He is going to be the one reproving and correcting. That's why you're not supposed to go until he has introduced himself to you. But until then, like Dwayne said, be at study. Have your own Bible study going on the side. Be in fellowship with brothers of like minded. Amen. Hallelujah. Anything else? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't get don't get discouraged. You hear me? Right. Just keep pushing towards them all. I don't care how many times you fall off. Always remember this one. You was determined to learn how to ride a bicycle. Rather you got scraped up, rather you got hit by cars. Nobody couldn't tell you, I'm gonna ride this. You ain't gonna ride no bike. Right. Same thing with God. Just keep everything, no matter how many times you fall, get back up. So we all going to fall. Right. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's right. We're all a work in process. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's something you said earlier about, you know, God looked at you for in your brokenness. Mm -hmm. I used to always say that I had to get my life right first before I seek God. Right. But coming to understanding with the word, right, God God equips the call. You don't need to be equipped with nothing. He wants your rags. He wants every today. The way we are today, that's how God wants us. He don't want us to go buy no house. He don't want us to go get no suit. You don't have to have the right car. Mm, right. I think we gotta have all that Sorry. before we come to the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Anybody else? Now. I remember while Dwayne was talking, the Holy Ghost wouldn't allow me to go get this. Because we need we need this so we can understand. Man, been... Isaiah at 55 and 7. This is what we could be doing while we are waiting. Let the wicked forsake his way. Quit doing evil things. Stop that. Forsake that. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Quit thinking about how you're going to get up and rob people. How you're going to get up and sex people and destroy people's marriages and lives and cheat. Get all that stuff out of your mind. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him to our God. For he will abundantly pardon you. That's what you could be doing while you're waiting. Quit thinking negative. Quit doing negative. Get in your word. Amen. That's beautiful right there. Just like Brother Dwayne was Amen. saying. Amen. Just, just like Brother Dwayne was saying. We always thought we had to do get all this stuff before we come to God. We can't get ourselves together. Only God can. God loved us in our brokenness. God come to us while we we're in our brokenness. I'm not saying stay broken. I'm not saying stay doing what you're doing and God's going to come find you. But what I'm saying is, you don't have to go above and beyond to try to fix yourself. God want to fix you. Just like we said right here in Isaiah. Turn from your wicked thoughts and your wicked ways and return unto the word, the Lord. And he'll abundantly pardon you from all of that past stuff. He'll bring you forward. Amen. Last one, and we're getting out of here. Luke 9 at 24. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Don't be worried about saving this flesh, this life here. It's going bye-bye, I keep telling you. It's going bye-bye. It's set up like that for a reason. Man's heart is not going to repent. Man's heart is wicked. The father already told Samuel, they don't refuse you. They refuse at me. 
Man is refusing God. Man ain't refusing man. Man wanted man to govern him. And then God told man what man is going to do to you. He's going to make you all about his business, all about his capital, all about doing. And that's what man is doing. It's about how to put you in further bondage. See, and that's why I loved about David. When David got, got it wrong, he said, I put my I put my penalty in the hands of the Lord. See, the Lord don't know how much you can handle. Man don't, and they don't care. Man will push the button on you when God would have gave you a second chance. That's why I said when something come up, Christians are not supposed to be suing Christians. Christians are not supposed to be fighting and hitting back. Guess what Christians are supposed to be doing? Real Christians. Leaving that room for God to avenge them. Because when you act out of character, God ain't got to do nothing to him now. You already spit back on him. God ain't got to do nothing now. You already cussed him back out. But when you don't, and you allow that place for God to get them, God going to give them right what they deserve. That's right. We allow God to to um, take revenge and um, <clears throat> avenge us. But um, we we need to be able to stay in the word. We need to be able to pray for those that harm us. We're definitely going to be getting into some more of that because we need to see that over and over again, especially us in the world. And, you know, some of us got the spirit and growing here in the spirit and growing there in the spirit and being babes in the spirit. So we, we're looking at it over and over again. There's nothing wrong with that. All this is going to do is strengthen us so we can see when we encounter those problems, you know, the Holy Ghost can remind us what to do, not to spit back, wipe it off. You're the bigger man. Pray for that brother. You hear me? Pray for that brother that he don't walk down the street and God allow a truck to run him right over. So you got to understand who you're messing with in these times. You do, for real. It's that important. It is that important. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. So we see that there's victory in the Lord. There's life in the Lord. This flesh ain't life. It never has been. I know we grow up and we think it is. This is all we know. But there's a greater that has come. Hallelujah. Amen. Any last words, anybody? Any last words? Amen. You know, also, as you, as we, you know, you say we're going to go over it again and again and again and again and again. That's a beautiful thing because every time you read it, it means something different. It allows you to see different growth in you. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to do that too. Sorry. Also, it makes you familiarize with the word. Yeah. <laughs> the word is live and active. Yeah. Dropping yeah. any double edged sword. It really is. Amen. 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 Anybody, anybody else got anything they want to say? Anybody? Anybody? Like we always said, if you have not given your life to the Lord, if you profess with your mouth, Romans 10, 9, and believe in your heart that God raised his son, you got people on the internet, they don't understand the difference between the Father and Jesus. Or they're talking about God who raised up himself. Be careful of these people that don't understand the Godhead. That's very important. The father raised up his son, Jesus. And if we are partakers of that, guess what? Jesus is going to raise us up. Hallelujah. You got much to look forward to. Definitely do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, just for people to understand, apologetics is important in the gospel. So when you see from this channel or you see from any other channel, you have to do apologetics. Defending the gospel is imperative. Right here at 16, 1 Corinthians 16, 16 and 17. It's the Apostle Paul after saluting the sisters 
and the brothers in Christ. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. Marking them is keep on showing how they're against the Savior. Keep on showing how they're against. And see, this is why we got to get so endowed in our word. Because they got some people out there that's so tricky. Everything they saying is good. But when it get to Jesus, it ain't. You have to be careful of that. You can be deceived by that. Just like I said before. You can preach women being pants. I'm just saying, I'm just using this as a scenario. But if you don't know Jesus, guess what? You're going to be in hell with pants on. That's what that means. Hallelujah. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. You have to mark them. You have to avoid them. Sometimes marking them can go on, pointing out their inconsistencies, pointing out how they deny Jesus, pointing out how they're against Jesus. Nothing wrong with that. We're called to do that. Man can say what they want to say about you. As Christ had died, Romans 8, 34. So man can't say anything about you. Or it's Christ who died, and he's commissioned us and told us what to do. Amen, everybody? Amen. Everybody know what to sleep on me? <laughs> Everybody know what to sleep? Not I. Amen. 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 God bless you, brothers and sisters. I'm going to press out, Dwayne. Anybody got any last things they want to say? Go and press out if you don't. Father God. Lord, we like to thank you for allowing us to come together tonight, Father God, and to dive in your word, Lord. We like the Lord that whoever is here, Father God, that you continue keeping your unsanded hand placed upon them. Don't allow them to be misled, Father God. Don't allow us to mislead or misguide anyone, Father. Continue using us how you see fit, Father. Remove anything away from us that is not of you. Whoever needs a healing, whether it's mentally, physically, or spiritually, Lord, you are the only healer that we should be seeking. We thank you for everything in your son, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. Man, I'm sorry about that last week. We did the, um, the thing on Christians, and um, I didn't record it. For some reason, I was having problems that, that morning or that day, and I didn't record it. I, man, that had that was made me kind of frustrated because I thought we had a real good study and then pointing that out for, you know, for believers to see, like Brother Dwayne keeps saying to us, you know, it's so hard right now for a, a convert to, to get online and try to find his way because there's so much deception out there, so many seducing spirits. So that's why I wanted to get that out there so they can see in the word these men of God who've been ordained by Jesus, who've been commissioned to carry the gospel. Their words matter. What they say go. <laughs> Amen. Because the father has commissioned his son whom the son has commissioned his apostle, carry the same message. Don't get lost in the message. I mean, well, you want to get lost in the message, don't get lost in the world because the world ain't the message. The message is different from the world. The message is spiritual and it's life. So if you're trying to interpret something that's spiritual in life with carnal, you're going to get lost. You're going to get lost. You're not going to see it. Amen. But if you have a sincere heart, God is going to put you around Amen. for the word you can receive it. Amen. You brothers have a good night. Definitely have a, a good morning. Hallelujah. Yes. God bless you. Y'all have a great week. Good word for the night too, brother. God bless you, brother Dwayne. Amen. God bless you, brother T. You and Noah. Good to see you again, Noah. Always a pleasure. I hope you come on out to the breakfast. With us, I had to reschedule. I was going through some things, and I'll tell you about it one day. Just going to work uh -huh. up here in Forks, but we're definitely gonna schedule it coming up real soon. I would like to see you, brother. Yeah, amen, amen man. Bless you, bless you all, man. Have a good night. Thank you, yes, sir. God bless all you. Right, all right, all right. Good night, man. That's the reschedule with uh, brother Lemuel, right? Yeah, that's the one with brother Lemuel. I had to reschedule it. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I understood. Yes, Info. Info, yes, man. Yes, sir. Hey. Get me up, Dirk. Huh? Get me up. Yeah, most definitely. You already know. All right. All right. All right. God bless. Love y'all, man. Yes, sir.